So Ryan Ham here, and what you see before you is cool stuff. I have all the uh, various parts pieces laid out before me uh, for my SWR Silencer Co. Spectre 2. Yeah, okay, all guns are unloaded. Uh, empty magazine, magazine removed, nothing in the chamber. This one also, nothing in the chamber, magazine removed. And uh, this one I will show you that there is no cartridge in the chamber. And this one also is uh, empty. It's a, it's a dummy primer in case anybody doesn't know. Alrighty. So I, uh, I reset to day one as if I had just gotten my uh, Silencer Co. Spectre 2. And it comes in a, uh, in a cool little, uh, little box here. I'm not going to show you the other side because it's, uh, it's got my serial number on it. Uh, but I will open this up, and that is SWR, and underneath you have foam, this over here, you have foam, this, it looks like a flashlight or something, and then you got uh, the manual, the SWR, um, a Silencer Co. Company is what they say. You can read it upside down if you want, but uh, here you go. I read the manual thoroughly and completely because I'm excited by this stuff. You can pause the video and read it if you'd like. Some of that uh, information is outdated. You can also download it, load it from their website. The reason I say it's outdated is because some of the tools they show you don't come with it. Uh, this is the only tool. And uh, read something rather warranty card. I don't know. And uh, here it, it tells you how to use your disassembly tool. Uh, I haven't had to use it on the uh, back cap, but I have had. Uh, I do have to use it on the front cap because there's an O-ring there, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, and then I guess we can uh, open up the flashlight. I don't, there's no. I don't see a suppressor. I guess we can open up the flashlight here. And of course, you know it's not a flashlight. This is my. Uh, the case is kind of cheap, kind of cheesy, but uh, what do you expect for a $300, $400 suppressor? I've also blocked out my serial number on there. I put that away. So that's kind of an unboxing, although uh, I have. I did unbox it. Uh, I didn't see this. Uh, honestly, it was at my dealer, and I didn't see it until the, the day I picked it up uh, with my Form 4 approved. So. Uh, that was it was kind of like Christmas for me. Uh, here is the SWR Spectre 2. I did an earlier video, but I'm, I'm wanting this to be a standalone video on just the SWR Spectre 2. It says SWR West uh, Valley, Utah, Spectre 2, 22 long rifle, and SPCT2, and then it's got my serial number, and then it's got Silencer Co. at the, uh, at the end of it, and then that cool little SWR logo there. So let's uh, let's uh, kind of figure out. Uh, I believe it weighs uh, 6.8 ounces. I don't know for sure. I haven't weighed it, and I don't have a scale that accurate. It is a half by 28 thread, uh, and it takes uh, one of two uh, thread specs. It either takes a half by 28 by 400 thousandths, which is what the industry standard 22 long rifle barrels should be, uh, or there is an, an O-ring in there, and I'll show you that in a bit where it'll take uh, the Silencer Co. profile, which has got that little nub that sits, sits up in front of it and it engages with an O-ring and it kind of seals your threads off. It's good and bad and I'll tell you why in a minute, okay? So, uh, this is just a, uh, a, a thread adapter for, for half by 20 to uh, half by 28. Couldn't use this one um, because the threads on my uh, on my uh, half by 20 gun well, were not compatible so I'm gonna end up selling the gun and just getting another host and uh, this is a cap uh, the the cap that silence silence go provides has an extra o-ring there so if your o-ring goes bad on your uh, it, if you happen to have one of these uh, one of these uh, thread protectors uh, if the o-ring goes bad on your specter you could just swap it out because it's the same o-ring or you can just get them online Okay, so I'm going to disassemble it. I had it loosened, but sometimes you'll need to loosen it up, and that's what the included tool is for. 
Uh, so that's off of there and you see the blast baffle there and I will remove all of the baffles there and I'll leave them over here. Th these two don't stick together too well. That's the blast baffle. The rest are just uh, regular regular good old-fashioned baffles and again I don't have anything to break them apart but uh, they do break apart fairly easy. You need uh, sometimes you need a, a little bit of persuasion so uh, give me just a second let me go in tools and grab a persuasion bar uh, which is just a punch and they, they just say to, to put the uh, put the punch or the uh, there you go or the uh, they, they suggest using an allen wrench but uh, this is what I have handy and just kind of kind of prying them apart there and uh, they're they're pretty tough, so I don't think I'm going to hurt them by doing that. So what you what you end up with is one blast baffle, and the difference between the blast baffle and the uh, the, uh, the regular baffle is, as you see, there's these little dimples right there and right there that are missing from the other baffles. And the bass blast baffle is is machined slightly different, and you'll need it uh, to be right against the back of the. Uh, the back cap and the reason you need it against the back cap is because this little recess here is perfectly made for the back cap Come on focus there you go and if you try to put another one in it will not work because it's too wide there so these are only meant to fit together like this now you can put it together wrong but you see there's a lot of slop in there and so you don't want that. You definitely want that uh, that blast baffle to be your last baffle. There's another thing they want all these all these little notches to line up when you put it together here. All these little notches, and the main reason for that is I guess that's the way they designed it for maximum suppression. All right, so you've got all these baffles. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven regular baffles and a blast baffle. Baffle, so eight total baffles and the end cap so the the uh, the uh, gas inside of your suppressor has to go through nine separate stages before it gets out of the suppressor and each one of them is just really difficult to get by uh, at that high velocity so it, it just slows it down an awful lot so I'm gonna go ahead and take the uh, front cap off using the provided tool okay once you get it to that point you just Thread it out. Okay. Alrighty, so inside the tube, and here's one advantage to this type of, uh, of assembly. Inside the tube will stay fairly clean because all of the uh, fouling stays inside of the click together baffle assembly. Um, I don't know that you can install it, or I don't know that it matters whether you install it uh, from one end or the other. I don't think it does. I haven't tried it that that way, but did you remember which way I took it off? No, it looks like it'll install from both ends. But I'll, I'll just go ahead and put it uh, put it together so that the the uh, <laughs> the logo is on the right side of the gun. Okay, so real simple. I mean, there's not a whole lot to it. Inside of here, um, you will see a. Maybe you won't. <laughs> uh, you'll see an O-ring. And that O-ring is there to, uh, you see a little better on, on this, but that O-ring is there to engage with the, uh, the threads or the, uh, the front part of your muzzle if your muzzle is cut properly. So let me show you what that looks like, and I'll thread on the adapter. See that last little bit is a little bit harder, and then what you see down inside of here, if you could see anything at all, because it's not focusing properly, what you see down inside of here is that that uh, O-ring has kind of surrounded the barrel. Come on, focus. 
it is not wanting to focus. There we go. See, the O-ring has kind of surrounded the barrel. Uh, and what that does is it keeps the threads clean. However, it can cause a buildup that is difficult to get by. And that buildup will be right on the muzzle. Uh, and oh, it just takes so long to focus right around this area here. And that'll be difficult to thread by. Um, so if you have a muzzle that's not cut to, uh, to Spectre or Sparrow thread specs, for instance, my Ruger uh, take down with the thread of the barrel here. Uh, what will end up happening is if you try to if you try to thread it on, and I'll do so with the uh, thread protector here. If you try to thread it on, it stops right about there, and the condition you end up with is it uh, it crushes that that O-ring there, and it ruins the O-ring. And it's uh, if you can get it threaded on, you can't get it threaded all the way on. Uh, that is a big issue if you've got a, a, a rifle like this. So what Silencer Code does is they sell a spacer, uh, and that spacer is, uh, is uh, 250,000, so quarter inch thick, and it fits between uh, the 400 thousandths that's required and the face of the muzzle. The problem is that's still not the right thickness. It needs to be 220 thousandths because these threads are 620 thousandths long. Uh, so it ends up being 30 thousandths too long and it pushes the, the suppressor up. So what you end up getting is you, get, you still end up getting a blowback on your threads. Uh, so I've got a solution. I've got a jam nut on the way that, uh, that uh, I will check for concentricity after I get the jam nut, but it'll go in between here and here. And it is 180 thousandths thick. And then I'll put uh, two shims so I get it to, up to uh, 220. Uh, 220 minus 600 is 400 thousandths, which is standard. That's what you need. Okay, so this is a 400 thousandths muzzle, and I'm going to screw this on for demonstration purposes. Again, this this kind of this uh, uh, thread protector mimics the inside of the uh, Spectre 2. And you see, you still have that little bit of resistance right at the end. Well, instead of having the, the O-ring go around the muzzle, it just rests kind of against the muzzle. So it protects your thread still. Um, it does provide a little bit of resistance to backing off because it's, it's loose for about a, a half a turn there. But it's still engaging with the O-ring, so that's still fairly, fairly tight. So it... it it, uh, it gives you a lot of advantages there. If at all possible, get your threads cut to the proper uh, Silencer Co. Uh, spec, and they have uh, you can download that uh, that specification. Um, and most gunsmiths, uh, the the ones that deal with uh, with class three kind of stuff, will know how to do that. <sighs> okay, uh, so these are the hosts that I, I intend. Uh, I'm going to use this as a host and then I'll end up selling it probably or, you know, keeping it but not using it too much uh, because the the, uh, um, the hammer just bites me too much. I just, I can't stand shooting it. I've got to think about it too much. All right, so let's put this back together and we'll try and line up all the, uh, so you got your blast baffle, we'll do that last and try and line up all the, all the little things here. So... It's uh, it's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> you gotta you gotta think about this. So each each one of the little notches has got to get lined up. And I have not shot this one. I have shot the Spectre two. I, I am uh, familiar with them. I just I didn't have my own until now. Uh, so I'm trying to show you as much as I can before I get it real dirty. Uh, and and that'll hopefully suffice. So those are staying together pretty well. And darn it, I hard to do on camera. I'm reaching around the, the tripod and everything like that. So there's that. And the final one, you also want to line up uh, the, the blast baffle there. Um, I'm going to put, uh, put the stack back in. Is this the right way? Yeah, put the stack back in. Just kind of slide it. Darn it. Slide it over there. 
Maybe I, may, maybe I am uh, supposed to do this just from the uh, rear, but no, it was just a little bit, uh, a little bit tight in there. So I can't guarantee those baffles all, are all aligned, but uh, I'm going to take it apart one more time before I, before I go out and shoot it. But anyways, it's best to put that end cap back on. I was just trying to do it a different way, and I guess getting all fancy here. All right, so I'm going to start to thread this on, and then I'll, uh, I'll tighten the front cap first, and then the rear cap. So back that off a little bit, tighten the front cap. And then the rear cap is actually pretty tight that way. That's one thing, if you have the, the rear cap too tight, since it's pressing the baffles in between, uh, if you have the, the rear cap too tight, uh, you can loosen it. Uh, believe it or not, by uh, by loosening the front cap as well. Don't over torque that. I mean, it's it's on there pretty good. Uh, see how there's a little gap there. So that tells me something is probably wrong. So I'm going to take it out and see what's wrong with the stack here. What did I do wrong? Or it might not be anything. It just might might be my inexperience. And stack still looks good. Everything's kind of aligned. Uh, we're not talking perfection here. Okay, everything goes back in. And I'm almost done. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to take you beyond 20 minutes. But if you've seen my videos. Yeah, see the gap is a little bit, uh, it's about the same. So let me do this. Let me loosen the, the front cap. Tighten the back one all the way up until it's just about snug. Tighten the front one down until it's snug. And then I should still be able to get that one out. Okay, there you go. That is the Spectre 2. Um, what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to chop the barrel off uh, about four inches, uh, roughly four inches, and uh, have it threaded to the Silencer Co. Uh, spec threads. Uh, just the focus, you stupid camera. Okay, and uh, in that way uh, I'll be able to uh, use the suppressor with the full O-ring engagement. I have to set the sight back and everything. All right. So that's a good overview of the uh, Spectre 2. Um, there's uh, there's probably more videos to come. Uh, I'm just uh, not. <laughs> I'm pretty much done for tonight. If you have any questions, uh, please comment. If you like the video, please like. Uh, if you want to refer to it again, please uh, favorite. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. If you think your friends might enjoy it, uh, please share. Surround ham. Bye.